Hello everyone. Welcome to another part of SGR fundamental series. Today I'm going to talk about SGR global infrastructure. What are all the components that make up this infrastructure and how they are related to each other. It is important that you are familiar with these terminologies when stepping into the SGR world. Let's get started with the smallest building block of this infrastructure and then move our way towards top of hierarchy. Whenever you provision any service in Azure, whether it's a virtual machine or SQL server, it is hosted on a physical server in background. And the facility, the physical facility that hosts this infrastructure is called as data center. Now, as per Microsoft, Azure data centers are unique building located all over the globe that house a group of networked computer servers. Each Azure data center has its own independent power, cooling, and network infrastructure. As of today, Azure has 200 plus physical data centers located all over the globe. They are linked by one of the largest interconnected network on the planet. Then comes Azure region, which is a group of data centers that are connected with a low latency and high throughput network. Azure tries to maintain a minimum distance of almost 480 kilometers between their data centers. So certain events like natural disasters, power or network outage doesn't impact all regions at same time. Azure has over 60 regions as of today, which is more than any other cloud provider out there, which gives you flexibility to choose the region nearest to you or even your client, whichever suits best to you and fulfills the compliance and governance requirements. It is not necessary that an Azure region will have multiple data centers as there can be constraints within a geography such as geography size or any other regulations. Most of the services in Azure are region specific, which means you will have to specify the region where your service will be hosted while creating them. Azure does have global services as well. One such example is Azure Active Directory where you don't need to specify any location when you are creating these type of resources. Now, the next one is availability zone, which is a regional feature that is designed to protect from data center failure. Each zone is made up of one or more data centers, which are equipped with independent power, cooling, and networking. Since the availability zones are physically separate within a region, it protects app from facility level issues. When you start deploying your applications or services in availability zones, then you start utilizing the high availability and disaster recovery features of Azure, making your ap applications more durable and less prone to issues. Now on your screen, we now have a blueprint of how data center availability zone and region fit into the hierarchy. As you can see, Azure region consists of multiple availability zones, three in our case, and then an availability zone consists of one or more data centers, where all the data centers are connected with each other through high throughput and low latency networks. Now, when you go to Azure portal to create a resource, the way availability zones show up is they will show you up as if you choose a region which is applicable for availability zone, you'll get options like availability zone one, availability zone two, or availability zone three. Now, what will happen if an entire region goes down? In that case, it won't matter even if you deployed your resource in availability zone. To cater for such scenarios, we have region pairs within the same geographic region in Azure, which basically accounts for disaster recovery in case an entire region goes down. However, there is an exception in region pairing where 
Brazil South is paired with a region outside its geography. So whenever a region goes down, then the services automatically fail over to its dedicated regional pair. When this all comes together, we refer to it as Azure geography. Now on my screen, there is a extract from Microsoft website, which shows some of the region pairs. So for instance, if you look at Australia geography, Australia East is paired with Australia Southeast. And similarly in China geography, China North is paired with China East. By now you would have noticed this is a static pairing where you don't have control to decide a region pair when creating your resources. You can refer to the link on my screen to have a look at regional pairs for all the geographies. Now, Azure supports what is called as sovereign regions. These support greater compliance for specific markets. These regions operate isolated instances of the Azure cloud computing platform that run dedicated hardware and isolated networks. These regions even have their separate base URLs. So the standard URL which you use to access Azure portal which is portal.azure.com does not take you to these regions. You, you, have, you, you have a dedicated URL to, to go to these regions. So at the moment, there are two sovereign regions. One is Azure government and the other one is Azure China. The Azure government cloud is available to US government customers and their partners. US federal, state, local, tribal governments and their partners have access to the Azure government cloud dedicated instance as well. And the operations of these US government instances are controlled by screened US citizens. Now the Second one on the list is Azure China, which is again a physical and logical network isolated instance of cloud services, which are located in China. Now, in order to apply for an Azure China account, you need a Chinese legal entity, internet content provider license and physical presence within China. Azure China is operated by a partner called 21 via net and not Microsoft directly. There used to be a Azure Germany as well to meet German data privacy regulations. Uh, but since August 2018, Microsoft has not been accepting new customers or deploying any new features and services into the Germany locations. Now, based on the evaluation on customer needs, they recently launched two new data center regions in Germany offering customers data residency uh, on the Microsoft global network, as well as competitive pricing. This brings me to the end of this module. If you like the content, then please hit like and subscribe the channel. I'll see you in the next part of the series.